Hey everyone, what I figured that I would do for the Saturday, because I don't normally do videos on a Saturday, but I've also been pretty busy this week and have not gotten as many out this week as I would have hoped to. I figured that I would do a really short one to bang out to make sure we're still getting information out there. And this will be mainly for people who are from a non-science background looking to study for the GAMSAT in March 2022. Maybe you're actually planning for the one in September as well, but trying to work out how you actually navigate all of this information to prepare for section three of GAMSAT. A lot of people have uh, sent me emails and messages and that kind of thing asking about like, where do I actually start? How do I know that I've, I've kind of covered everything? And it seems like a very, very overwhelming process. So basically my advice as always to people is going to be sticking to the ACE material. You've already heard that one before, so I won't repeat myself. But if you're actually needing to review the theory that's covered in section three the first thing that i would do is create a checklist or if you'd prefer you can go straight onto my resources page which is linked below and i've actually put my own checklist for section three up on there that you can run through it breaks it down by biology chemistry physics and some math stuff as well so you kind of know the general limits of what you need uh, in terms of content now of course it's not a content-based exam so really what you're trying to do is understand the key foundational principles so that you can then apply them in different kind of applications. And a lot of the time, the questions in section three don't require much technical calculation, more so understanding relationships between variables or being able to read graphs or being able to extrapolate information based on new information that you're provided. That being said, knowing the underlying principles and the foundations of these three disciplines means that you can process the information pretty quickly. To create a bit of a strategy, because I know that people like those uh, when they're preparing for the GAMSAT, is I've got here, um, if you're looking to cover content specifically and then strategy, so mostly for non-science people, the first thing is I would break down the activities into all of these different types and pretty much work your way through the table. So the first thing you do is start with diagnostics, so work through the checklist of your topics. And then as you're going through them, search the keywords in the ASA material. So get access to all of those PDFs, do it the official way. All you have to do is search the keywords in each of the booklets. And I've suggested maybe just the green booklet. It obviously isn't gonna cover everything, but the green one is a bit more outdated. It covers a lot more content-based stuff and it's actually a good place to start. Search the keywords, it'll pull up questions that are related to that topic. You don't have to necessarily uh, check the answers. You can attempt them just to see what you can glean off of it just from logic or from prior knowledge. Don't check the answers yet. Then move on, then go to research the topic. So now you know what the boundaries are, what kind of things GAMSAT seems to be focusing on. Research that topic, keep the question in front of you. That will prevent you from going down a rabbit hole. Use that question as context and as a guide. Then what you can do is Google free skill sheets and worksheets and that kind of thing on that topic. So if you're looking at acids and bases, just search the words acids and bases, worksheets, PDF. It'll pull up a bunch of free PDFs that you can use. From that, then you'll actually build up a lot more consistency and fluency in using those terms and, and that particular topic. They're not gonna be the same as, as uh, GAMSAT material all the time, but the idea is it builds up the literacy with the science. After you've done that, then go back to the green book before you've checked the answer and re-attempt it, see if you wanna change your answer, see if you're thinking about it a little bit differently. And then from there, go through feedback. So then feedback, score the question uh, from both before and after, see if you actually made the right improvements and if you're making those changes in your thinking. Uh, and then you can calculate scores for different topics as you go as well to see where your strong and weak points are. Uh, in terms of analysis, people talk about this a lot and I'm now starting to do more videos on like how I'm studying and how I'm analyzing things, but it's mostly section one. So pretty much what you wanna ask yourself is what was wrong, then answer the question of why you were wrong, why that happened, where the clues and the information came from, highlighting it, finding the information in the STEM, it'll always be there. Uh, how can the other answers potentially be ruled out to go through process of elimination? What point of understanding is being assessed from the theory? You'll see it's very little, it's not actually super technical, it's just like a single point. Like for example, uh, more, more disparity in electronegativity means a greater uh, dipolar interaction or something like that. It's just a positive negative relationships between things. Then work out what your error type was. So work out if it was a content related error that you need to review again, like an error in your judgment or your reasoning, uh, or if it was just a silly error, those ones are like, they're not so bad because it means that they're not repeatable if they're silly errors. If you can categorize your errors, you can start to think about where it's coming from. Uh, and then you can still gauge whether or not your theory study is working. What it also means is that you're not just getting bogged down in content, 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 because that can go really, really off topic. 
you're staying on track with doing questions and applying the reasoning immediately. It's a much, much better way to do things. It's a much better investment in your time. Then with reflection as well, review your performance tracking data. You can use like my template that I put up as well on the resources page and uh, make notes to uh, yourself on adapting that study method. Always be ready to change the way that you're studying. There is no perfect strategy that you can just you know, churn out week after week and suddenly get a particular score. You have to be thinking about what's working for you and what you need to be changing and focusing on. Once you've done that then, you can then move to this strategy, which may be helpful for people who have already covered the science and are pretty happy with their content. Uh, and effectively, this is strategic only. You skip the diagnostics and the research and learn components. You go straight to time to practice, do it in a minimum of a set of 20 under timed conditions, then go through that exact same theory of reflection. There may be less focus though on content, but you may find some content errors as well. Uh, and the reflection process is identical as well. So there we go. So hopefully if you're kind of new to GAMSAT and you're not really sure where to go, or you've been pretty disappointed in a score from a previous one, you're looking to make a big jump, but you know that you need to go over the content, is I would say it may take about a month's time or so. So getting started early is a good plan. It might take about a month of following this content and strategy process of working your way through that checklist, try to get through a few a day where you can. Always make sure it's guided by questions and then apply the skills. You wanna be focusing on a little bit on the actual theoretical understanding of the science, but more so on the key points that are actually being drilled in the test because ASA, yes, they can vary the questions and everything, but there is a pattern in the way that they write their questions. And the more you focus on that, the easier section three will become. Hopefully this is all helpful. Hopefully it stayed pretty short as well, and I will see you in the next one.